Welcome back to the spotlight, and we continue our discussion on Beyond Borders. Some analysts say that UN's Copenhagen summit represented the largest single chance for countries to negotiate how to tackle climate change. Representatives of almost 200 countries met to discuss goals such as trying to keep global warming under two degrees Celsius, and how much cash developed countries should provide to developing nations to protect themselves from the effects of climate change. For different perspective. Countries are struggling to maintain their balance on the seesaw of economic growth on one side and carbon emission reduction on the other. Now let's take a look. In the run-up to the event, commentators speculated that the success of a deal would rest largely on the U.S. and China finding common ground. But although both President Obama and Premier Wen Jiabao returned to their respective nations claiming victory. The final deal has received a lukewarm response internationally. Developing nations will benefit from a $100 billion a year fund by 2020 to help pay for the effects of global warming, and measures to reduce deforestation were written into the text. But crucially, the deal is not legally binding, meaning countries that continue to emit greenhouse gases will not face any punishment. Good news for those countries nurturing their economies, but bad news for the environment.